Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm trying a little bit of a different layout today. I've got a different lens on the camera, a different microphone in front of me, if you couldn't tell. Might be making a video about this microphone in the near future. It's the Shure MV7. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But that's not the focus of today's video. As you could probably tell, it is taking up half of the screen here. This is the FlashForge Creator Max 2. I first got into 3D printing back in 2015. In fact, this is the first 3D printer I ever owned. It's the M3D, it was like $350. And you might be surprised to realize that this still works to this very day. I used it just before Christmas. I did have a bit of a lapse in printing, but 2020 was sort of the year that I made myself get back into printing and I've had a lot of fun. So when FlashForge reached out and offered to send this to me for free to take a look at. Keep in mind I'm not being paid to make this video other than just them providing this printer to me. I was absolutely on board. So up to this point every 3D printer that I've used has been a single head traditional bog standard 3D printer. This however features an independent dual extruder setup. You might even be able to see it here. So here's one and here's two. It has a build volume in millimeters of 200 by 148 by 150 just with one extruder at a time or and this is one of the really cool things about it you can do a mirror mode or a duplicate mode where both extruders are going at the same time. In mirror mode, it just creates mirrored copies of whatever you're printing. In duplicate mode, as you might expect, it creates two copies of them without mirroring it. Those would obviously have significantly less left to right area to travel in. It does have 0.4 millimeter nozzles on the extruders and uses standard 1.75 millimeter filament. And each of the extruders can heat up to a max of 240 degrees Celsius with a heated build plate that can get up to 120 degrees Celsius, which is more than enough for ABS and all those things that require a little higher temperatures. Speaking of which, it does support a wide variety of different filament types. I didn't see anything mentioned about the ultra specific ones like nylon and wood, but PLA, ABS, hips, things like that. Again, you can find out more about this all over on their website, which I will link below. In terms of the setup and what's in the box and everything, on the very top, you'll find the power cable, a glue stick, a scraper tool, a USB cable, a little bag with four spare nozzles in it, a bag full of screws and metal plates. Those metal plates are actually installed at the moment. Those are the, I think they call it a filament scraper. Essentially, when the extruder is returning to its home position, it just scrapes off whatever might be on the nozzle. There's also a bag full of spare parts and tools and grease and just sort of everything you'll need to run the printer. It also included these two 3D printed parts, which I later found out were for adjusting the Y axis. Two filament holders, which I quickly installed on the back of the printer. We'll see that in a minute. The two extruders, which did not come pre-installed. I had to put them in place. And then inside of the printer, you open it up and pull the things out. All housed within the plastic cover, which I don't have out here at the moment, were two one kilogram spools of filament, which again, I do have installed on the back of the printer at the moment. And one thing to mention here, in order to remove all the remaining styrofoam that was down inside of here, I did have to pull up the build plate and it took quite a bit of force to do that. Did not damage anything. It's what it says to do in the manual. And there were a bunch of zip ties to hold everything in place for shipment. I had to cut those and remove some yellow plastic clips and everything was free to move after that. For the assembly, as I kind of mentioned earlier, there were four screws that have to go into the underside of each of the extruders. You just put it in place, find where the screw goes and tighten it with an Allen wrench that's included. You attach the filament scrapers, again, one on each side with two screws and the included Allen wrenches. And that was pretty much all it took to get up and running. One thing that might be a little bit daunting if you are new to 3D printing, this does not come with built-in automatic leveling. It does have a leveling program. You just have to go into the menu, which by the way, touchscreen interface, very nice. Go in there and you press leveling. It puts everything where it needs to be. There is a provided leveling card. You just put underneath the head and you screw or unscrew three nuts on the underside of the build plate to, to help level it out. Pretty standard fare. And actually the other 3D printer that I've been using didn't come with that built-in. I had to actually download some G code and put that on there to make it work. This came with it built in, which was very nice. I would definitely prefer full auto leveling, but not a whole lot of printers have that built in. And before we get into what have I printed and what do I think of it and how's it working and everything, just take a quick look around the printer itself. You do have this door on the front, which you can open. The primary purpose of the door obviously is to close and protect whatever's inside. It does have a bit of a magnetic click. Whenever you get it close, it pulls itself closed like that. I haven't found a way to take this door off yet, but I'm sure it is possible. You don't really need to have it closed. You don't really need to have it on there if you're printing PLA. For ABS though, very handy to have. And again, that top cover, you can create sort of an entirely enclosed space to keep the heat level really high if you're printing ABS. I haven't done any of that yet. In fact, the only things that I've printed have been with the included PLA, which I'll spin around now and you can take a look at. I did forget, I did also have to install these tubes on the back. You just clip them into place here, as you can see, run them up and then push them into the extreme extruder, but then these filament holders, they're kind of specially fit for the flash forge filament. Take them off just like that. It clips in and then you can pull it out just like that. And then to put the filament back in place, you just kind of clip it 
like that. And as I said, there are two rolls that were included, white and blue in my case. Down here at the bottom, if you can see it, this is where the power plug will go. This is where the power button is. You just flip it on when you're ready to go. Over on this side, you'll see there is a USB port and then an SD card slot. It did come with an SD card, 16 gigabyte SanDisk in my case. And I think at that point, it's probably a good time to start talking about the things I've printed on this. So that SD card that I mentioned just a minute ago, it did come with three different files already on it, ready to go. The first one was for this standard test hook, as you can probably see, looks very nice. Get a good up close look. Maybe you can see the layer lines. Very clean print, very well done. Kind of difficult to get off of the built-in build plate. So as I mentioned, there is a build plate that's already in place. It's heated and everything. They do also include in this kit a magnetic removable build plate with replaceable stickers for it. Let me go ahead and just open it up and pull it out. So I did go ahead and install that after that first print because it was kind of difficult to get that off. And I did get a video of the installation process. I probably should have removed the sticker from the build plate before putting the magnet on. I didn't think to do that at the time, that's my mistake. But we do have a magnet in place here, as you can probably see there, that's a glossy magnetic surface, and then a metal build surface here, which I then attached one of the stickers to. So this is the new build plate that I'm using, and it's still a little difficult to remove things from it, but you can see there, it's been a couple of hours since I printed something last. I had left this on there on purpose for that reason, totally on purpose. But with this, it's magnetic, it's removable, and it's flexible, so I can bend it to loosen prints up, which is super, super nice, and then just very easily put it back in place and not lose any of my leveling, which is great. Definitely forgot to mention this while I was filming earlier, but after installing this magnetic base plate, obviously this is adding a little extra depth, which meant that the printer would not level afterward. So I ended up having to go back and print this shim. I will again link to this down below, but effectively this fits back here in the back behind the Z-axis rods and just pushes down in there in between them. Then whenever the build plate moves up, it hits this toggle switch and that little bit of extra plastic there makes it hit it just a little bit sooner, which makes extra room for this build plate. Also, I did show those filament holders that came along with it. I did end up printing, 3D printing, some additional filament holders. So these just slip right into the back to replace the ones that came with it. This is just a free open source model you can download and print so you don't have to use only flash forge filament i'll put links to this down below as well so yeah after this first print and how well it turned out the next print on the card was a mirrored benchy and you can see both of those right here of course one is white and one is blue because that's the two colors of filament these were printed at the exact same time and just getting up really really close on the blue in here it's really hard to spot any imperfections in it. I know it's not 100% completely perfect, but like right here, there's a little bit of discoloration. Maybe that's a heat difference. Maybe that's the, the filament not being completely dry. But to me, this looks great. I am really impressed with how well this thing printed at this point. It even included rafts on both of them, which were very, very difficult to remove from the magnetic build plate. It wasn't until I re really thoroughly gave it a bend until they started to release, which has been kind of confusing, but also kind of awesome because with other printers I've used, it's been notorious for just prints coming up off the bed all the time and having to put special things on there to hold them in place, sprays and glue and whatever else. I think I mentioned it earlier. This did come with a glue stick, but I haven't used it yet, which actually leads to what makes this printer sort of awesome, and that's the dual printing. So the third item that I printed is this Moai statue. I think I said that right. As you can see, it doesn't look amazing, but that's because this is a wall. It did come with a raft on the bottom of it that I had to peel off with some pliers because, again, it was very thoroughly stuck on there. But this wall comes right off. By the way, this wall is just to help provide a barrier so that you don't have colors mixing and you have it look really nice with two colors. So this is what the Moai statue ended up looking like. You can see there's a really nice transition between the two colors. Not a whole lot of imperfections. There's a couple of places where it's like, oh yeah, there's this little spot down here and a little tiny bit of blue right there. You know, a bit of white here on the front. This could probably be sanded off and there's a little bit of bubbling around the, the mouth area there. But still, for the first dual color print that I have ever done, considering it just came on the SD card and I pressed print, I was impressed with this thing. I thought it did a really great job. So seeing the fine details in that, the fine details in the Benchy, I wanted to see what it could do with something else. I wanted to see what it could do with really fine details on like a character. So I printed the Mandalorian. And I'm gonna put links to all the things that I printed that are not standard on the card. But here's the Mandalorian in that blue that was included. I did scale it down by 50% just to make it go a little faster and really test the fine details. I'm just zooming in really close here. 
you can see lots and lots of detail. I didn't use supports or anything. This is just straight off the printer. The only thing I could really find to kind of complain about about this is if I get right up here really close on the edge of his weapon, you can see there's a little bit of a mess here at the end. The end of his blaster is a little bit rough, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Lots of really good, really fine detail on that. I would kind of like to print it at 100% but I think the height might have been a little bit much for this at 100%. So again, very impressed so far. Then I went back and I decided to print something that I've printed a lot of on my other 3D printer. This is a jeans hanger, a pants hanger, but I use it to hang backpacks in my closet. This was printed on my other 3D printer in a pretty high quality setting. It took a decent amount of time to print. Looks pretty good. Good enough that I made like seven or eight of these already. Well, I printed it in the white and you can see it looks good. The only thing that doesn't look amazing about this is if I get really close in this little area, you can see there's a little, maybe you can see, there's some roughness right here. That's not gonna stop me from using it, but there's even lettering here on the end of it and the lettering came out really nicely. And the difference between this and the original one, this was printed on my older printer using a very high quality setting, like a, a really precise setting. This was printed in low resolution, so it, it only goes up from here. <laughs> By the way, if you have backpacks and if you have closet space and you want to hang your backpacks up, these things are amazing. I will, again, put links down below. So then after that, I wanted to do another two color print and because the, the Moai statue was included on the card, I wanted to try something that I found that I looked, looked up online and see if I could do it. And I found this. This is a poker chip. Came from Thingiverse. It was two STL files. I just dragged and dropped them into their flash print software, which by the way, doesn't work with Cura as far as I know. I think there might be some people that are working on getting it to work with Cura or maybe people that have gotten it working, but I just used their software. Flash print 4.6 worked just fine for me. I drag and dropped them in there. It aligned them automatically. I clicked one part of the object. I clicked the extruder on the left-hand side, picked which extruder I wanted to use. I clicked the other part, the, the white lines here, clicked the other extruder, and I was good to go. That was legitimately all that it took. And you can hopefully see, getting up close here, all the fine details. You can see the lines and everything there. Flip it over. This, I think, is the top, and it is definitely a little bit more rough than the bottom. The bottom, though, turned out really, really well. So very, very impressive. And again, all that I have done to this is I screwed the extruders in. I used these little guides to pull the Y axis into alignment. I turned it on and I hit print. I haven't done any other tuning. I haven't done any dehydration of the filament or anything like that. And this is the quality I'm getting so far. And the last thing to show you here, I just printed this earlier today, is a sort of an all-in-one 3D printer test. I've seen a bunch of people use this. And in most cases, most printers have a lot of trouble with this because this kind of does a little bit of everything. As you see here on the front, 3D printer test, Text looks great. There's an overhang test, and then all of the degrees of the overhang, if you can see that. And look at the overhangs. This is printed with no supports, as you can obviously tell. And at the top end here, the very top, that's 80 degrees. And there's really very little drooping. There's really very little, let me get up really close to it so you can kind of see that. You can see there's a couple of little lines here right at 80 degrees, 70 degrees, absolutely no problems. Very, very impressive. And everything else on here, there's a, a bridging test that happens right in here. Normally you'd see a bunch of spider webbing, absolutely nothing, flawless. Like I have not done any cleanup on this. I literally took the build plate out out, popped it off and set it down here on my desk. This is ridiculous. Like I'm not gonna say that it looks like it's injection molded because as you can probably see, if I can get the reflection just right, you can see all of the lines on it. You can see the kind of striping across it. You might be able to tell there's some lettering in here that is indented lettering. And because it is so small, it had some trouble with that. But again, I sliced this using their flash print software and I just put the standard settings. I didn't set it to high or anything. I probably should have set it to high now that I think about it, but it would have taken longer. This took about six hours, six and a half. But overall, to kind of wrap things up, to round it up, to go ahead and put this back in the closet. You can't even see the closet now because I got it blocked with this printer. I was kind of skeptical when they first reached out, when they offered to send this to me to take a look at. I'd never used a Flash Forge printer before. I was not familiar with them. Now that I'm a little more familiar with it, I found that there is a subreddit dedicated to Flash Forge printers. I found a bunch of videos about Flash Forge and just the build quality, the sturdiness, the heaviness of this thing, the ease of setup. Like I said, I'm using another 3D printer. The assembly on that took me like an hour and a half. The assembly on this took me maybe 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes if you include taking off the plastic wrap and taking out all of the packing materials and everything. But the actual assembly, the putting in the eight screws, the putting on the two plates with two screws each and turning it on, that was maybe 15 minutes and I was up and going. Very, very impressive stuff. The price point is gonna be the thing that catches a lot of people up. This printer retails for $969 at the time of filming this. That said, I'm not familiar enough with dual color printers to know 
how competitive that is. But just, again, a couple of days worth of using this, my impressions of it, ridiculously amazing print quality. I'm very impressed. So I guess let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you would like to see if you want to see anything else out of this printer. I've been thinking about and planning to do a video just showing my 3D printing room, which again is back over there. I've been setting up a little home workshop and doing a lot of 3D printing, and I think this will be a big help in making things a little bit more colorful, because most of the stuff that I've printed so far has been single color and kind of dull and flat and lifeless. Being able to take something and slice it with multiple colors, very interesting stuff. And actually another thing I forgot to mention, their flash print software, you can drag in JPEGs and PNG files and all sorts of images, and it automatically converts it to a 3D object. You can either have it just convert to a 3D file based on the image, or you can have it be a sphere or a, a cylinder. So like I took a picture of my cat and put it in there, and I, I haven't printed it yet, but I'm tempted to, because you could make like a 3D relief map based on an image, which is so cool. Anyway, I've been rambling on for like 30 minutes now. I'm gonna have to cut this down a lot. Thanks so much to Flash Forge for reaching out and for sending this out for me to take a look at. Just a reminder, I will be keeping this, but I am not being paid. I'm not being given money to actually make this video or to say nice things about it. Full editorial control to say what I want about it, and I want to say nice things about it because it has been great so far. Thanks so much to you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, and if you have not already and you want to, subscribe to the channel. It's free, doesn't cost you a penny. There's a notification bell you can even use to get notified when new videos come out, because that's been kind of infrequent lately. Sorry about that. And I will see you again next time. Bye, guys.